Joining us company, if you just tuned in, this is Y254. Discussion Monday begins right now. We are having a focus on the Ministry of Defence. Joining me here on set tonight is Anita Nkirote, Governance Consultant and Diana Njeri, Security Expert. Good evening, ladies. Good evening. It's a pleasure to have you here. Now, uh, I want to begin with you, Anita. Yeah. At the beginning of this year, we, we, we started it off badly with terror attacks, something, I, I don't know, it has been happening over time. Like January, we, you remember last year what happened in Dusit attack, we remember 2016 there was a Ladi attack, and now uh, we had uh, this year, particularly here in Kenya, in uh, Lamu, we had cases. I, I mean, this, this is something that has been happening. But we have people at the helm. Now the reshuffle, the president did the reshuffle and uh, found Monica Juma being the best person to be in that docket. And uh, I saw one of the uh, write-ups, it's an homecoming for her because she grew up in the military uh, space. The father was uh, in the military. So I think she has an idea of what she'll be coming to do. But even so, where, why is Kenya a soft so, spot for terror attacks? Um, in specific relation to Al-Shabaab and Somali, oh sorry, thank you Hilary for having me as usual. Um, Kenya is a soft spot for um, attacks, especially currently by Al-Shabaab, but generally by the Somali, because uh, you know I'm a student of history and I'll start by 19, around 19, 1960s when Kenyatta was president. And remember we had the Northern Frontier District that was supposed to be Somali. There was a tug of war, should it be Somalis or should it be Kenyans? And we chose to, Kenyatta chose to fight for it. Now, if you look at the Somali flag, it has five stars. One, it represents the northern district, Kenya's north frontier district, which is northern Kenya, mm -hmm. Djibouti, uh, some parts of Eritrea. Then uh, Somaliland, Somaliland, you've heard of Somaliland. That's the Itan Italian Somali. And then we have the British Somali. So uh, Somali will always be incomplete. And if you remember the Wagala massacre, whereby, yes, where we exactly and it was all related to this but uh, then you come fast forward you know Kenya again is a um, international hub when it comes to East Africa and you remember um, that the US base we had the American Embassy way before upper bomb blast cooperative and now before it moved to Gigiri so Kenya will always be a soft spot uh, because until the northern frontier district goes back to Somali uh, it's not going to be good. And also remember AMISOM. Because of the political instability that Somalia has been going through, Kenya was a part of um, the team among the countries that sent its army to Somalia. So we don't actually get information on what exactly we are doing, when the war will end. Remember now it's over 10 years. So we don't know what, we only get what the government wants us to get, but we don't know what's going on inside there so whatever whatever is going on there there the, and we, we we are not aware we are only going to see it through retaliatory attacks right. yes okay what would be your opinion diana where are we uh, targeted oftenly um i think we are targeted oftenly first of all because even of the border point it's uh it's kind of porous in nature there are the kdf those sometime back they were saying the kdf is building a wall between Kenya and Somalia, I don't know where. Do you know where it got to? <laughs> Nobody knows where it got to. So yeah, I feel it's because of the porous nature of, 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 the, of the border point. And also the fact that uh, we have had a lot of interna international community disputes. Remember, we are also fighting for the triangle at the ocean that has oil. So that also could be a factor, yeah. Right. Okay, now, um you just mentioned of, uh, some of the reasons, and uh, I, I would want you to put it in a layman's language for one to understand what is this northern frontier. Mm -hmm. Are we speaking of the northeastern part of Kenya, the Somalis we know are our people, they should not belong here, or mm -hmm. what, what are we talking about? Yes, I'm actually talking about that. Um, that in fact, if you do a local survey, personally, um, I come where I live. I live in areas whereby uh, we have a lot of uh, Somali, Kenyan Somalis. And I asked one of them, my neighbor, she's under 18, she's around 16 years. I asked her, so are you Kenyan or are you Somali? She said, I am Kenyan Somali. 
uh, then I asked her when it pool comes to shove and you have to like choose. She said, I've never been to Mogadishu, but I am Somali. So um, the, the issue with the Northern Front distri di District is that it belonged, there was a task, it was just like the triangular, the, 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 the borders we have currently, you know, they were all drawn up by the British. And it's the same issue she's talking about uh, at the ocean, uh, the, the oil rich area. So, and we also remember like the, so the Maasai's are also split. We have uh, Maasai's in Tanzania, we have Maasai's in Kenya. Same thing with Uganda. We have communities literally in the western part of this country that th they, when they cross the border, they're saying, I'm going to see my cousins, literally. So that's what happened with the uh, northeastern part of this country. And the Somali government then wanted its uh, take. And if you look clearly, I wish you can Google at your phone, <laughs> you will see the, the five stars. So one of them literally belongs to, uh, they have um, claims, they have claims. And also Ethiopia, but now you know Ethiopia, now they have an Oromo president. And Oromo is Somali, and he re he has no problem with um, with them claiming stakes. But until then, the power the Somali remember Somali is at war with itself. But now, when it comes to the external party, it's um, even worse. Right. Indeed, we, we have a problem. But now, let's now focus to this particular document that has been given to Monica Juma. Mm -hmm. Over the over time, we have seen as being now attacked, and uh, I don't know reasons that you're raising here i don't know why because when uh, former president uh, moiki baki sent uh, these troops to somali he was like uh, I, I, like everyone thought this is something that will end but now it has been like uh, this year next year next year so every year we are in Somali to ensure that the troops don't make it here but they do and this is something that has been contributed to some of our individuals uh, Diana, because I remember last week we had an issue, some people were arrested fearing individuals in Kenya. And uh, just the other day we had others being arrested in Kiambu. So these people make it in Kenya. How? Yeah. Actually, even today morning I was passing through Moy Avenue and, uh, no, it was Kimathi Street. Uh, and I saw one person there being arrested, the passport being taken, like, uh, okay, who are you? And I knew definitely that is a... Uh, that is a suspicion of security breaches and for me i feel there is a major cor uh, problem of corruption because we have rules we have border rules on how you get from one country to another why are we having illegal immigrants you know why are we still having why do we still have to have keep this conversation going on and on when you go to developed countries like europe it's really even hard to get into their countries but because here we still have corruption we still have people who want to be to be bribed at the border and even even those guns don't get through through underground or the air they still get through the, the through various borders and they're still here in nairobi they're still here in the country so i feel monica juma the first thing uh, or rather the cabinet minister monica juma the first thing that she should uh, she should focus on is killing corruption in the defense sector right. yeah yeah because it is also said uh, some of the kdf soldiers are um bought yeah. Now, uh, you remember the Garissa attack? Mm -hmm. We had the Dusit, we had uh, Westgate. Why wouldn't Kenyans learn from this? There was an issue that was raised about the Kakuma and the Dab uh, refugee camps. Why can't we have now as a nation come, uh, come clear with the policies and say we, we are not going to allow? As in, can we have now the defense um, uh, ministry or any other organization that looks into the security of this nation to ensure the policies that have been put in place do not compromise the citizens of this nation? Um, unfortunately, Hirali, Kenya is a signatory to some international organizations, uh, rules and regulations, for example, the United Nations. And an issue of like the uh, Dadaab and Kakuma is a foreign policy matter. And we're actually signatories to host these countries and we receive funds to host them. So then it becomes uh, also an economic matter. And you remember once upon a time, currently the DP had actually said we are going to close da down these refugee camps, Dadaab and Kakuma, and there was a lot of international outcry. Because when you go to these refugee camps, who usually suffers most, it's the women. 
it's the children and uh, they are the ones who are going to now you're asking them to go back to war-torn countries so um, it's actually inhumane and it will be a breach of our part in international statutes that we have signed so unless we want to get out of that uh, you've raised the fundamental issues of the continuing um, terror attacks and I'd like to to bring you to a current recent debate uh, by Boniface Mwangi and he was asking how are we recruiting the NIS because the other way to counter terrorism is through intelligence and there was actually found there is no proper structures I know once you read the magazine once in a while uh, Daily Nation or the likes you usually see an advertisement for Ministry of Defense ETC uh, we know public servants are hired by public service commission. We know how Parastat was hired, but no one knows how NIS hires. And Boniface was bringing it to attention that actually NIS is a preserve of government officials. Now to bring, she talked about corruption. I'm also now bringing an issue of nepotism in key uh, state operations. I mean, the National Intelligence Service should be able to tell us what is happening. If we are going to put incompetent people, people who are there just because of a certain relative or they know someone, and then also issues with the Ministry of Defense. There have been rumors that at the end of the day, you still end up uh, parting some amount of money to to get to uh, to certain positions. Then again, I come again to the issue again of KD. KDF, what we are doing in Somali. Well, I understand these are is issues of critical importance, and even the actually the office, the Auditor General does not audit defense. He, and I'm wrong, we've spent 500,000, 500, that's it. He cannot audit because why do you want to know how many guns we purchased? Where, why do you want to know what is going on? These are matters of national importance. Yet the same soldiers, um, KDF, you will hear they are engaging in uh, the salt, the, sol the sorry, the sugar that had mercury uh, smuggling. So they are out there uh, doing charcoal business. They are out there uh, doing sugar business. So you wonder, are we really here to protect, or are we also part of the plunder? And uh, matters of national security must always take a, um, a historical background. While matters of tribalism, for example, like Hutu Tuts in Rwanda can somehow be solved over the years. Now matters of terrorism and then it comes attached in terms of religion. It becomes like an issue of we are this unity and we are all we are all Islam and now you try this have killed empires. Matters of uh, when it comes now to religion and in regards to terrorism, this have even killed uh, empire. And the, the the countries like if you look the history of Afghanistan, Iran, all these countries that have been involved in war of that nature, it usually spans decades and decades and decades. So to say to say that um, I welcome the cabinet reshuffle. I know that. Um, Monica Juma has a track record. She was a PS. She was PS immigration. So she used to issue also ensure the, the ministry issues passports, ETC, citizenship. Then she also moved to the uh, PS defense where she did recommendable. She was the architecture of um, Kenya national security. Even her husband, Peter Kagwanja, is a lawyer and also an expert in international law, especially matters regarding security. He was part of the formation of the AU and the likes of, um, you know, even the AU has the ECOWAS wing that uh, fights for West Africa. So I, I, I believe uh, we have the background, but now if we, if we, we have to do histori historical justice to Somali. And uh, for me, I'd propose a radical measure. For example, um, the, well, they take the northern, then the, we stop our court case, we take the oil. Okay. That's my radical. <laughs> that's my radical. All right. Uh, apparently, uh, time is running out on us. But I, I, as a security expert, she has raised an issue of NAS. How how competent are our people, and can we trust the intel that comes in? Just the other day, we had we had we we had uh, an intel that came in. Some some places will be attacked. But then the DCA came out and said that that's not our work and whatever is out there that did not come from us. So who, whose job is this and how do we trust them? Yeah, even be, uh, okay. before I answer that question, I'd like to comment that while we're giving security comments, it's really good to be careful about uh, branding a whole community or, or a whole religion because it brings another now kind of war 
and uh, people are being secluded here, they're not getting passports and stuff like that. And to get to your question, uh, I feel we have the right personnel in N NIS, according to even the statistics that people have interacted with in the security sector, we have the right personnel. And uh, now these are uh, the formation of many agencies, even in any other government ministry, brings a lot of blame game, you know. This is not, this is not, uh, this is not our, this is not our mandate. Tuna, uh, tuna awa, this is not our mandate. This is not our mandate. So it's also time, especially governance experts uh, like Anita, to come out and tell and educate the public and on who, who, or uh, it's not even their, their work, but it's the government's work. Like to come in, who is mandated to do what? Because that is where the, the, the problem is. Because for me, I feel these, these agents are even trained in Israel. The government pays for them to go to outside the country to be trained. And then it goes back to the issue of corruption, the issue of we don't know who takes the mandate. Yeah. So we have to deal with corruption in all ends. Now, I want us to conclude with this one thing. Samson Mwadede will be retiring next month. Uh, he extended his tenure. Uh, we remember most of the attacks have happened in the last, say, 10 years during uh, Karangi's time, and now Mwadede is leaving. The greatest task ahead of uh, Monica Jume is to look for another uh, person to take the position. Can we say Mwadede did the best he could? and the person coming in, what would they be doing, Anita? I think it's more, what's more important is not the personality around uh, these key positions, but rather the experience, and we've had uh, the, ex these guys are very experienced. I believe some of these attacks were inevitable and we've handled it the best way we can. So as long as we still get uh, people with the same qualifications, people drawn from the same uh, field, everything will uh, be okay, but we must deal now with the, for me, the big question at hand is the historical injustice. Uh, what, uh, what would you weigh in, into this? Did they do enough? Um, no. They didn't. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, finally, finally, how do we harmonize the Ministry of Interior and Defense? Because we have uh, the command problem. Uh, say the police have arrived into the scene and then we have the KDF to be contacted. Mm -hmm. there, there's always a blame game of command. How will they harmonize to ensure that we are safe, Anita? Um, for me, uh, I'd still borrow from Monica's Juma style, which is one of our best quoted achievements, form a multi-agency team. That's the best way, and I've seen government do it time and time over again. So, um, for example, the way she was saying, um, lack of mandate, bring like NIS guys together or bring the bosses, bring um, PS interior, bring um, the, the, um, the police, bring police oversight authority. Let's have this team and see who does what. When it comes from the top, it will have a trickle down effect. So for me, I believe the best way forward is have a multi-agency team so that they know how they can coordinate and work together. If, uh, if NIS comes with intelligence, that's what it can do. Uh, I've gotten this intelligence, but it cannot like go fight wars, etc, etc. I mean, everybody have, has their own mandate and they have their own skills. So when they come with this, who is supposed to do this and do this and do this? Come up with a counter me mechanism framework. Okay. Diana, as a security expert, how will they harmonize to ensure uh, no chains of command will be breached or something happens, they start blaming each other? Me, uh, I feel just from one ministry that that it's only one person who pulls the shots because the more the more we have a lot of agencies, the more we have a multi-agency. Policies are formed. People sit in hotels. They do a lot of policies. They go for benchmarking, and we still don't see the results. For me, just from one ministry and let one person pull the shots up there, because we see even in security matters, women and girls still are the most affected. When uh, when there is a KDF, like when there was the when there was, or rather when KDF go for their own. I'm lacking the, those words when they are going. Yeah, and, sure well, that's <laughs> yeah. and who, who are killed mostly is the male figures in the family. And the women and the children remain suffering. And so we have inequalities continue, continue, and continue, and poverty. So just form one and let one person pull the shots. All right. Anita, final uh, comments. Um, all the best to Monica Juma. I personally trust her, and the whole republic uh, has. We have our eyes on her, and I believe she'll deliver. Okay. Yes. All right. 
Diana. Yeah, I also wish um, Miss Monica Juma the best, and also she should also check in the scene of cybercrime because it's also like a whole new development that is affecting Kenyans. Kenyans are losing their money, their data. Yeah, she should also look into that. Thank you. All right. Thank you so much for coming and airing your opinions. And one thing that is coming out clearly is about corruption, and this is something that uh, needs to end very soon. They have been my guest, Diana Njeri. She's a security expert and a Nitin Kirote governance consultant. Coming up next is Uwai Masharik with the JTSK and Ken Relbis. They are very much ready. Keep it Y254. Be seeing you again very soon. My name is Adela Hilary. Have yourself a very good and wonderful week ahead. Goodbye.